Um, how do you anticipate the, res the number of residents of these buildings will affect the transportation on Roosevelt Island, the tram, the subway, and parking? That's probably, I'll take that one. <laughs> I'm not dodging a bullet, but we no, just decided which questions. <laughs> right. Uh, well, most of these, these are students and faculty who are going to be in place on Roosevelt Island, so they will live and work uh, on Roosevelt Island. Excuse me. So we would anticipate that they wouldn't have much of, a, much of an effect at all on, on transportation, you know, during obviously during the day on the weekends now and then, yeah, they'll want to get off, but they live and work on the campus. And I would supplement that by saying... And, and I sh I'm so sorry, I did not introduce her partner uh, in this development, David Kramer from Hudson Related. So David, thank you, yes, and my apologies. Jane, I've been stewing ever since that. <laughs> um, the main grumble is about the F platform leaving the island on a weekday morning. So if you were thinking about density, that's going to have no impact on that situation. You couldn't ask for a more ideal development as as a, as, a, as a university campus where nobody's going to be on that morning commute leaving the island. Now, what about on weekends, the use of a tram? They're allowed. No, I'm just wondering, have you yes. anticipated how that will affect the, the overcrowding on the existing trams? The EIS, uh, that was in the environmental uh, impact statement, and, and there, they did not show that there would be an adverse effect you know, on that for uh, the uh, subway or the tram. Okay, and what about garbage removal from the uh, building? The, you're not going to be connected to the AVAC system, no. so how no. do you anticipate the garbage to be removed, and where? Well, I can tell you where, and uh, Jane would like to talk about uh, how. <laughs> um, can you go back to the... Yeah, that's good. So there's a, uh, I mentioned before, there's a whole trash recycle storage room here. So the trash is actually coming down from the upper floors. We have a three, sep three separate um, uh, trash system bin. So actually residents are sorting the trash in their own apartments and they can sort by dropping right down the chute. It comes in here, it stays here until the time that pickup actually occurs. The trash would be brought out to this uh, slightly expanded area of the sidewalk here on North Loop Road. And when the garbage trucks come by, and I don't know anything about you know, exactly how that's all scheduled, but the building management will coordinate with the pickup time so that it's not like, you know, endlessly out there. The whole idea is to have a minimum presence you know, on the street. Uh, this building is uh, residential. Um, there are small uh, you know, kitchen units, if you will, in them. So you'll have the normal kind of the trash that you would expect from any other residential building. But there's no commercial function, there's no retail function uh, in the building. But it's going to be a private parking service. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a concern raised at one of the earlier meetings about migratory birds hitting the building. Has that been looked at? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Uh, if you want to go back to the, one of the perspectives. Uh, the big issue there, as we understand it, um, and I'm not an ornithologist, so I don't know all the science, uh, but that's um, often when built, uh, buildings are completely glazed, uh, a high degree of, of uh, glass surface can be confusing for birds and they can be slam into it. Typically these, not always, but typically happen in my understanding is uh, primarily of office buildings, which usually are fully glazed buildings. The difference here is this building is actually only about 25%, 26% glazed. There's a lot of solid, opaque, non-reflective surface on the on the facade. It's also broken up the banding so it breaks up the, the surface, so it creates a pattern that is, you know, optically, you know, uh, discernible. This is as far as I'm aware, you know, for, for our avian friends. So. Um, I couldn't tell you what will happen other than, you know, we've, we've given it thought and we're trying to make sure, you know, building of this type didn't cause a, a big problem that way. The third element, too, because it's a residential building, two things happen. In the evening, lights are on within the apartments, uh, so it also creates a presence that way, just as every other residential building does. And second, there's no architect there's very little architectural lighting that's being anticipated on the building itself, so it doesn't become, again, like, Midtown glass towers or something like that, they're all illuminated and also create that sort of visual havoc for, for birds. This building would be pretty relatively.
possibility of the dark side uh, in the evenings. And it's hard to tell from the perspective, but will the, the top of the building be above the 59th Street Bridge? Nope, way below it. <laughs> how far um, below it? How far below yeah, it? I, this I can't is, see, I can't tell. Well, if you go to another view, so that's, you know, that's the issue with these perspectives. It depends on where you take your camera, if you pretend you're in a balloon and rising up or down. Um, and the further down you go, the more something looks taller than something that's further away. Uh, but this building is at... Um, 260. Do you know what the height of that is? 260, and it's 350, I think, or something like that. The lower level is 100 feet above. Anyway, so the lower, answer is no. Lower, the answer is it is lower. <laughs> and will there be a roof? Will there be a rooftop deck on the building? There is a, uh, a small terrace right here for the common space for the residents uh, on that side of the building. Thank you. Hey,